Here we are with another video, and in this video, I will be talking about the unfortunate death of director John Singleton. I also will be talking about the life, legacy, and death of him as well. Now, you all know I like to give a brief intro before I go in deep, so here we go. Here we go again. I mean, this is the truth show, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is the truth show. Oh, yes. I was trying to allow the dust to settle, but I didn't want to wait too long, you know? So with that being said, let's get started. John Daniel Singleton was born in Los Angeles. His parents are named Sheila Ward Johnson, who was a pharmaceutical company sales executive, and Danny Singleton, a real estate agent, mortgage broker, and financial planner. He attended Blair High School. He also attended Pasadena College and the USC of Cinematic Arts. He'd was also a member of Kappa Alpha Pi fraternity. While there, he graduated in 1990. While there, he was very inspired and one of his strongest um, influences was Steven Spielberg, believe it or not. Upon graduating, he decided to have a hand at directing and his first film debut was Boys in the Hood, starring Cuba Gooding Jr., Angela Bassett's Ice Cube, Lawrence Fishburne, and Morris Chestnut never thinking that it would blow up, but it did, and he received Academy Award nominations for Best Original Screenplay and Best Director. He was the first black slash colored man and the youngest director to receive this. I mean, can you believe it? A man fresh out of college with a dream and a script. He went to the streets hustling, got some investors to give him some money, and he managed to raise $6.5 million and in turn made 57 point five million dollars in counting and this is back then it goes to show if you want something so bad keep at it keep working hard at it and never give up anyway he'd made more movies than that and they all did great in the box office he'd even directed a video with michael jackson eddie murphy and magic johnson called remember the time and so on and so forth with his many career endeavors now let's get personal Now, even though he was a great director and businessman, but just because he's a good businessman, it doesn't mean that he's the same as a man, you know, in his personal life. Now, before I go in too deep with that, let's stick a pin in that just for a minute and we'll pick it back up later. But keep in mind as I continue, okay? Now, he had many kids. He had a total of seven kids, okay? John had a total of seven kids. John had a child with his first wife, Tasha Lewis, in 1997, although there isn't any records of this marriage. He was also married to Ghanaian actress Okosa Jayamama Busha from 1996 to 1997, and they had a daughter together. He also has five other children from various of other relationships. It was even told that back in 2007, he was involved in an automobile accident in his hometown, Los Angeles, where he struck a jaywalking pedestrian named Constant Russell, who was 57 years old. The report said that Constant had stepped in front of the car. It was also reported that John was not under the influence of anything. He even stuck around until the police arrived and went in for questioning, and they released him. Constant ended up dying because she was hit pretty bad and John was never charged even after it got turned over to the district. And not to mention his reputation in Los Angeles. I say that because the streets talk. It was noted that Constant was taking her dear sweet time and John was yelling at her to move and she didn't listen. So you ramped against her hard. Meanwhile, at this time, his directing career wasn't so great and he wasn't in the best of moods. He was reported saying to an audience of students of Loyola Marymount University, he said this, they ain't letting the black people tell the stories. He also added, they want black people to be what they want them to be. And nobody is man enough to go and say that. They want black people to be who they want them to be as opposed to what they are. The black films now, so-called black films now, they're great, they're great films, but they're just product. They're not moving the bar forward creatively. When you try to make it homogenized, 
when you try to make it appeal to everybody, then you don't have anything that special. This statement got him a lot of criticism. I mean, John Singleton was one heck of a businessman. He knew exactly what he wanted and he was very honest. I mean, this is a very truthful statement. I mean, you see Empire, you see um, Star and all of these other movies, they're just basically what he just said in this statement just to be blunt you know they don't make movies like boys in the hood and all the movies that he directed that spoke to many people of many different walks of life you know what i mean not just what they feel that we should be you know just want to put that out there but let's keep moving along here all right then later he got charged for sexual harassment by daniel young the name sounds familiar yes well she had encounters with brevy jesse jackson as well but with john she said this the interviews took place in a room filled with public relations executives abff officials myself and my camera crew young writes when i walked into the room i heard singleton say something and i heard enough of it to know it was about me but i ignored it Thank God for my callous. I only had about four minutes to interview him, so I was in go mode. Young says that after the interview was completed, she approached Singleton to grab a microphone from him. He allegedly grabbed her wrist, pulled her toward him, and said, Bring that juiciness over here. He was sitting in a director's chair, so when he pulled me, I fell forward and stopped myself by placing my hands on his legs. He then leaned forward and kissed me on my cheek. Young writes, I said, oh, oh, okay, and stood up, embarrassed because everyone was definitely still in the room. Singleton later asked Young to take a picture, to which she agreed in order not to make it awkward. Young says the director put his hand around her waist and pulled her into him, saying, ooh, I'm gonna grab on tight to you. When Singleton and the crew left the room, Young asked a woman working at the festival if she saw what occurred. Yet, yeah, girl, I heard he likes big girls, the festival work allegedly said to Young. According to Young, the festival worker told her that she also took a picture with Singleton, in which he kissed her on the cheek and said, I love your face, it's so soft, I want to feel your cheek on my cheek. The Root reached out for comment from Singleton, but the director declined to comment. Now, of course, nothing came of this and he was never charged. But John was known to be this aggressive and violent to all of his women, including his baby mothers. Which brings me to this next story of his relationship he had with Tyra Banks. Now, I done a video about this. We'll leave the link below. So let's remove that pin. But in the meantime, let's watch a snip about their relationship. More. It seems when Tyra was dating John Singleton, he was very abusive. And this time, it was physical. It seems during an interview with Ryan Seacrest, Tyron said, and she didn't disclose the name of the man who beat her ass and would not disclose how long they dated. But I know it was John Singleton, and I'll explain that later. Anyway, he was pretty bad because that really messed with her mind thereafter because she found it tough to be in another stable relationship. Now, for the proof, it was John Singleton. Now, it seems that filmmaker John Singleton was arrested before for domestic violence in connection to an assault to the mother of one of his children. The judge placed him, and at the time he was 31 years old, on three years probation and ordered him to attend domestic violence counseling. Oh, there's more. He was charged again for another count when he tried to pick up his six-year-old daughter and they got into a heat argument and you can pretty much guess what happened after that oh i'm still not done yet apparently there was another time where singleton had repeatedly struck one of his girlfriends in her face with his fist while grabbing her neck and then threw her out of the house so trust me it was him because tyra was dating him back in 1994 it was also rumored that she had suffered many miscarriages because of his beatings and that was one of the reasons why it was hard for her to have kids. There were many times she had to cover up bruises and black eyes too. But she stayed with him for a second. I can go deep. Now if this isn't a video to taint the business image of this great director, it's to shed light of the truth, which is my job. With that being said, let's talk about his death.
Okay, now stay with me on this because it's going to get really, really ugly. But let me first give you the basics. John Singleton died in Cedar sinai Hospital, like many greats before him in that hospital, just saying, on April 29, 2019. Anyway, he was known to have high blood pressure and hypertension, but he was taking care of that. But it seems that they had put him in an induced coma after suffering a stroke which is a bit extreme. And when I explain, you see where I'm coming from. You see, prior to his death, his daughter Cleopatra had spoken out about her father, and this is what she said. That her dad is not in a coma and claims to be getting better every day. This is in stark contrast to the legal docs filed just yesterday. Well, that day anyway, by John's mom. Sheila, who claimed he was in a coma and had suffered a major stroke. Oh, I'm not done yet. Because she went on to say that Sheila is up to no good, claiming she's abused her position as John's personal and business manager, especially when it came to supporting his seven children. Cleopatra, a college sophomore, says in the docs that Sheila has stated her intention to liquidate John's assets and leave his kids with nothing. Oh, yes. Oh, there's more. She also says she upon her visiting him that he responded to the stimuli and has even smiled on many occasions. And a doctor told her that John was going to be out of the ICU in five days. Now I have to say, this explains his relationship with women and the fact why he always feels he has to be in control, hence his mother. Victims often out of pure trauma starts taking the actions of their insulter. So Cleopatra could have been telling the truth. His mother could have been slowly killing him for a long time now. And when he was in the hospital and she established a conservatorship to handle John's business dealings while he lay incapacitated, meaning she had legal authority to have complete access to all of his accounts and so on, which in turn brings it to his death and she may become automatically controlled of his estate and any earnings that he may receive from here on in. Because everyone who came in contact with him said that he was fine and they didn't notice anything. Heck, even Therese posted on his Instagram that he was just at his house. So ask yourselves, how does a man who was tweeting just three days before his, this alleged stroke then get induced into a freaking coma and then die? Was it deliberate because of his outspoken voice on Hollywood and the unfair way they're treating black legends and directors and so on? Because he also believed that Bill Cosby was innocent and the women against R. Kelly was over embellished and they were only out for money. I mean, when the hell were they fucking parents? Just saying. Well, that's it and may he and Paul Walker rest in peace.